let's move on, Ms. Hang Question 10. It's a lighter topic. The That's size ready. of the endowment funds of our autonomous universities are available from their financial reports. And based on these reports, the sizes at the end of financial year 2017 are NUS 5.9 billion, NTU 1.9 billion, SMU 1 billion, SUTD 1.1 billion, SIT and SUSS both 0.4 billion. <coughs> Each. The member also asked for the reserves accumulated. Reserves are operating surpluses, if any, accumulated over the years. They are typically tied up in assets, which can be buildings, facilities, long term investments, etc. The numbers are also available in the financial reports of the AUs, so I, I will not read them out here. So, what is pertinent is the use of endowment funds. The AU set up endowment funds with government support because they should have a separate stream of income such that they can embark on their own programs and activities without always depending on government. And every year, investments from the endowment fund will generate a return and only a portion of the investment returns are spent with the rest reinvested. The biggest use of endowment income is to pay for operating expenditure in delivering subsidized education. And this is because MOE contributes significantly to the endowment funds of the universities by matching donations that they raise. The other major uses are providing bursaries and scholarships, supporting additional programs to enrich students' learning, such as overseas internship and residential learning programs, funding research projects and sponsoring professorships. It is common practice internationally for universities to build up their endowment funds through donations to support students and activities outside of education, such as research and enterprise. Donations are always voluntary and decided by donors based on their trust in the organizations and their causes. Donors to AUs will typically specify how the monies are to be used which AUs do not have the liberty to change. Thank you. <coughs> thank you, Speaker, and thank you, Minister, for the conference you uh, Can I just ask a couple of clarifications? Uh, is that a quick check? It appears that um, NTU give up more bursary and scholarship compared to NUS, although NUS has a reserve of 9.5 billion, which is more than twice the NTU size. And SUT, though, has the least reserve of the three AUs I mentioned, has more than half of its undergraduates uh, receiving grants uh, for education opportunities and bursary and scholarship. So can MOE clarify whether is that a discrepancy or is there supposed to be a co-relationship between the number of bursary and scholarship given by AUs, by the, each AU compared to the reserve they have? And also the second, second clarification is that is that a cap that MOE will set for them to, um, for the size of endowment fund that each AU can accumulate over the years? Thank you. Mm, I don't have the exact numbers and breakdown to give an analysis. I am also not sure whether it is factually correct that NTU has more bursaries than NUS from endowment. Because we should also take into account, yes, bursaries and scholarships, part of it is funded through the endowment. But there are also non-endowed donations where donors they donate to the university but it's non-endowed. I donate 100,000, please use this 100,000 to distribute and help needy students. That, those are non-endowed donations, and NUS also has a lot of that. So I think that assertion, I'm not sure it's true. We really need to break down the numbers to compare NUS, NTU, SUTD, and so on and so forth. Is there a limit? There's currently not a limit, because our universities have started building endowments maybe over the last 20 years or so. Uh, compared to international universities, their endowments are not excessively large at all. In fact, many universities have, in international universities have endowment much bigger, bigger than that. And also, the, more importantly, is the incomes from the endowment funds. They are put to good use. Yeah, NUS recently put out a statement uh, outlining what they use the money for. It's for research, it's for bursaries, it's to help with residential programs. Uh, and so they are good users for it, and I think so long as there are 
and donors are prepared to part with their donations to support the institution, and I think we should encourage that, and government will continue to match uh, one to one or 1.5 to one. Associate Professor Walter Tessera. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the richer universities are effectively able to provide uh, more resources to their students. So I wish to ask the Minister um, if he thinks that this situation is equitable uh, and what, whether the Ministry has any policies to try to level the playing field um, if it is true that the richer universities can give more opportunities to their students than the poorer ones. Yeah, so there is some issue of social inequality between the AUs. Uh, so like, just like society, you, we redistribute wealth, you support the weaker members of society more. But AUs are all not that weak, lah. including our new AUs, SIT, SUS, not bad. Within a short period, they build up 400 million each. Uh, and part of the reason is that uh, from government's point of view, for the new universities, we match three to one. So for every dollar endowment fund that you raise, we match three to one. Whereas for a much more established university with a larger reserve, we will match much less. Having said that, um, I don't think we want to be too draconian in redistributing the endowment. The logic is not this dissimilar to a society because these are donors who willingly part with their donations to support the university. They probably saw something they like institutionally and how you use your funds and decide to, to donate to that particular cause, and I think we should not discourage them either. <laughs>